Okay, just recording this. I just got done uh, rendering the video refuting Watchman D and his false gospels and damnable heresies. And in the video, I do get quite fired up. And if you can't handle that, then go watch something else, okay? Because what this is going to be, this video that is that I'm doing, basically, video that I just did, I'll put it that way, is a harsh rebuke of a false prophet, okay? Uh, it's not being contentious, it's not being prideful, it's not being angry. It's harshly rebuking a false prophet, okay? Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 through 9 show that false prophets, what it openly says, those who preach a false gospel are accursed, okay? Paul uh, warns that preaching a false gospel, someone who preaches a false gospel is accursed, okay? When you're dealing with a false prophet, you, you don't play nice with them, okay? If they're preaching a false, uh, false gospel that's damning people to hell, you rebuke them sharply. Okay, Paul talks about in Titus chapter 1. Let me pull up the verse of scripture just to make sure I have the good reference. Because I always want to make sure I have the right scripture reference. Uh, because rebuking sharply. Because there is, you know, obviously you shouldn't be contentious and be angry. But there is, uh, and obviously the context of Titus chapter 1 is, you know, about the um, qualifications of elders and everything. But Titus chapter 1 verse 13. This witness is true, wherefore rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. Okay. This is a sharp rebuke of a false prophet who is accursed according to Galatians 1, 6 through 9. Watchman D, preaching a false workspace gospel. So if you can't handle me getting fired up, if you can't handle, you know, the sternness and, you know, oh, you're just being angry and contentious, then, you know, go watch something else, okay? Uh, this is for Christians who, to be warned of this heretic Watchman D. He's teaching a false gospel. And if you believe it's false gospel, you're lost, okay? Uh, his gospel is not... Uh, Jesus Christ saves me. No, it's Jesus Christ saves me, but I also save myself by my works and self-righteousness. That's his false gospel. It's uh, no different than Roman Catholicism. So, if you're deceived by him, first of all, get away. If you're saved, get away from Watchman D. Okay. If you're deceived by him, you know, make sure you get the true gospel. You can go on our website, Faithful Servants of Christ at WordPress.com. Go on the tab, the Gospel of the Grace of God. It'll be in the description. Okay, and get saved. Okay, because. His false gospel is going to damn you to hell. You're not saved by your self-righteousness. You're saved by Jesus Christ and his righteousness on the cross. That's why Titus 3, 5 says, Not by works of righteous, righteousness, which we have done. That's why Philippians 3, 9 says, you know, actually, let me just pull up the verse, make sure I have the right the reference. Okay, sorry about that. I had a little interruption there. Someone, you know, a visitor came in. But um, Philippians 3, 9, uh, this is... In, t in correlation to Titus 3 5. Okay, you're not saved by your righteousness, but Watchman D is teaching you're saved by your self righteousness. Mm -hmm. It's heresy. Philippians 3 9. And being found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Okay? It's not your righteousness. It's not your works of righteousness. Okay? It's not your own righteousness, which is of the law. That's what works is. He, essentially, what he's doing is he's putting you back under, under the law. You know, in Galatians 5. Verse 4, Paul talks about you're falling from grace if you're trying to go back under the law, which is ironically a verse these heretics who teach you can lose your salvation like to run to, Galatians 5, 4. They never read the context, okay? Paul is actually condemning the work salvation conditional security heretics like Watchman D, because uh, he's, he's saying in Galatians 5, 4 that if you're trying to go back under the law, then Christ is of no effect unto you. Galatians 2, 21 says if, you know, if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Okay? And they'll say, oh, we're not, they'll, they'll try to deny it. Oh, we're not taking it back in the law. We don't teach salvation by the law. Yeah, you are. Okay, if you're teaching work salvation, you're teaching salvation by the law. Galatians 2.21, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Galatians 5.4. I'm just going to pull off a few scriptures and I'll get to the actual video. Galatians 5.4, Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. Okay. Now again, in context, Paul is not talking about losing your salvation. Again, these heretics, like Watchman D, will rip this verse out of context. Uh, Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever you are justified by the law, the context is they are trying to go back under the law, and Paul is saying, well, if you're trying to do that, then Christ basically died for no reason. He's have no effect unto you. So that's what Watchman D is trying to do. He's trying to get you back under the law, which is what Paul's condemning in Galatians five, Galatians two. Another verse of scripture I want to pull up, Romans chapter 3, verse uh, is it? verse 25, in whom God, actually I'll start at verse 24, uh, Romans 3, 24, being justified freely by his grace through, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, yes, grace is a free gift, okay? That's why I try not to use the terms, I mean, I do use terms like easy believism and free grace, but that's to refer to the easy believism 
heresy that is no repentance of sin involved in salvation. No, grace is a free gift, okay? However, you attain God's grace. Okay, well, I don't want to say attain, because then I, my, you know, people who attack me might take that and say, oh, see, he's teaching works. Okay, God's grace through your faith. I'll put it that way. You don't earn God's grace by your works, obviously. But grace is a free gift that is basically, I want, I, I mean, anything I say, that I could, I could just be attacked over anything I say. So I'll just put it God's grace uh, through your faith. Okay, your faith, and then it's by God's grace, which is your faith is the condition on that. Okay, not by your works. Okay, and then repentance, uh, 2 Corinthians 7, 8 to 11, your repentance of sin is simply having godly sorrow over your sins. Repentance in the context of salvation. Okay, because then there's also repentance after salvation, where you basically turn from a sinful lifestyle. Repentance in the context of salvation is you have godly sorrow for your sin. That's what repentance of sins means. Repentance is not you having to stop sinning and live holy to be saved. That's heresy. That's works. Okay, holiness comes after your salvation, and it's for sanctification and for your rewards in heaven and for blessings on earth, not for your salvation. But Romans three twenty four. Also, uh, another scripture. You know, and I don't want to get too far into this because I want to just get to the actual video. But also Romans chapter 5, verses uh, 15 to 18, talk about grace being a free gift. Okay, Romans 3.24, I read that. Romans 3.25, In whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness, not our own, for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God, to declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness, that he might be the just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting then? Like Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, you know, not of works, lest any man should boast. Where is boasting them? Is it excluded? By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Okay? If you're saved by works, you can boast. Again, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. Romans 3, 27, saying the same thing. If you're saved by works, by the law, you can boast. Romans 3, 28, therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Okay? And of course, on grace being a free gift, this is the last scripture I'll read. And then I'll play the actual video. Romans chapter 5, verse 15. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more, of the, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto, hath abounded unto many. And not as it, were, at is, as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift, again, free gift, is of many offenses unto justification. Verse 17, For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they were they receive abundance of grace, and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Good verse on the substitutionary atonement. Okay? Jesus Christ died as your substitute. Okay? Adam caused you to, again, uh, Watchman D is a, also a sinless perfection heretic too, which I proved that sinless perfection is, is a form of Satanism. Uh, it's a form of Satan worship, I'll put it that way. That's what Satanism is. Because uh, if you believe you can be sinlessly perfect, you're asc you're basically ascending to heaven by your self-righteousness, just like Satan in Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 to 15. So sin sinless perfectionism is satanic. It's a form of Satanism. Uh, but again, uh, it's Jesus Christ, his righteousness, not your righteousness. Okay, Gift of righteousness. It's imputed to you. Again, Romans 4 talks about that. Uh, Romans 5.18 Therefore, as, as, the, as by the offense of one, judgment upon all men, con sorry, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came on, upon all men unto the justification of life. Jesus Christ, uh, grace is a free gift. Okay? When he died on the cross, salvation is a free gift. Okay? Put your faith in Jesus Christ by grace through faith. Okay? You come to God in repentance, you have God to serve for your sins, Put your faith in Jesus Christ. You call upon the name of the Lord, Romans 10, 9 to 13, and then the free gift of salvation is given to you. It's not something you have to earn. So yeah, Romans chapter 5, verses 15 and 18. Salvation is a free gift. And Romans 3, 24, being justified freely by his grace. Okay, so I'm going to close this video off. I'm going to play the actual video of refuting the heresies of Watchman D. So get, uh, let's get right into this. All right, just wanted to do a video in response to the heretic watchman D, he did some live streams attacking me, and you know, uh, is what these guys always do. And uh, I did a video responding to his false gospel of baptismal regeneration and work salvation. And the clip I'm going to show you, he uh, openly says that yeah, uh, faith plus good works is is the gospel. 
and I said, he's reading a comment I wrote where I was saying that basically faith plus, plus works is Satan's gospel, which it is. Okay, and I'm going to get into the scripture later on, which he won't show you, because uh, he's a heretic. He, he is self-righteous, basically. I showed in the last video that uh, sinless perfection, conditional security, heretics like him are self-righteous. They don't want to admit they're sinners. They don't want to admit that, you know, they, they, they think they're perfect, basically. Which, obviously, you know, when, you, when you're saved, okay, because here's the big difference, okay? There's a big difference between easy believism, which is a heresy, and also the work salvation, lordship, lordship salvation, heretics like a watchman be, okay? They'll lump you in the two categories. Either you're, they'll, they'll say either easy believism or you're a lordship salvation heretic like a watchman be, or a work salvation heretic. I'm neither one, okay? I don't believe in easy believism. I do believe in repentance, okay? There has to be repentance of sin involved with your salvation, okay? And he actually lies earlier in this thing and, and says that I'm changing the definition of repentance. Actually, let me try to find that timestamp. But he he acts like I'm preaching, you know, what I was saying in my video is I'm not saying there's, there's like different types of repentance. I'm saying repentance in the context of salvation is not the same as repentance in your Christian walk. And again, that's what these heretics can't see. These work salvation, self-righteous heretics, they, they don't understand the difference between your sanctification and your salvation. They mix the two together, which is their big folly. And that's how they, they slip in Satan's gospel of faith plus works, of good works. And again, you should do good works. And I was going to say this earlier, and I, I maybe didn't cover this enough in my other video, that when you're saved, and here's another thing these heretics don't understand, okay? The works salvation heretics like Washington D, they don't understand the thing of the new birth. They don't understand the concept of spiritual regeneration. You see, they think they have to basically live holy and earn their own salvation that way. The Bible teaches that when you're saved, the Holy Ghost comes in and he cleans your life up and gets sin out of your life. Okay? It's called the new birth. It's called spiritual regeneration, which again, these self-righteous heretics like Watchman D have no, have no understanding of because they're lost. That's simple. They, they don't understand spiritual things. But basically, when you're saved, the Holy Ghost comes in and cleans your life up, gets sin out of your life. Okay? It's called a changed life. Okay? When you're saved, okay, if you're a fornicator, you won't keep fornicating. The Holy Ghost gets that sin out. Okay? When you're a drug dealer, you're not going to keep dealing drugs. The Holy Spirit cleans your life up. Okay? But it's a process of sanctification. Okay? It will eventually happen. There will be a change at some point. It could be either inwardly, spiritually, or outwardly, but it will happen. However, it's not done to be saved or to stay saved. Okay? That's a big difference. Okay? Sanctification and your spiritual regeneration and a new birth is after your salvation. It's not for salvation like the Roman Catholics and work salvation heretics like Watchman D will teach. And again, I call them heretics and call them Roman Catholics because they're basically just preaching Roman Catholicism. I mean, this thing of, oh, you have to live holy and just merit your salvation that way. It's works salvation. I'm going to show you some proof on that. Uh, covered this in my other video, Jonah 3.10. Okay. Now keep in mind, you should live holy and the Holy Ghost will come in and clean your life up. Okay. There's going to be the process of spiritual regeneration. However, again, it's not done for your salvation. Okay. It doesn't affect your salvation. And, it's, and to say so is preaching a false gospel. Okay. Jonah 3.10. And God saw their works, okay, what were those works? That they turned from their evil way, okay? Turning from your evil ways and turning from your sin is a work, okay? It's a work that is done after salvation with the help of the Holy Spirit, okay? It's not done for your salvation. It's that simple. That's, that's the big point of contention that these, these self Because, again, what it really comes down to is pride, okay? These, these conditional security heretics, and conditional security is a very satanic heresy. I don't have time to get into that. But basically, conditional security, if you believe in conditional security, you're, you're denying the, the atonement of Jesus Christ, okay? Because if you believe you can lose your salvation, that means that you're saving yourself by your righteousness instead of Jesus Christ's righteousness. So it comes back to a place of pride and self-righteousness. You see, they don't want to get down on their knees before a holy, righteous God and admit that they're filthy and they're a sinner, okay? Let me show you a verse of scripture on that. Matthew chapter 15, and this isn't in my notes, this is just, you know showing you that these guys are self-righteous and prideful and they don't want it they, they won't admit for two seconds that they're a dog okay and let me show you the verse on that because yes jesus christ to all you liberal christians out there jesus christ did call people he did call somebody a dog okay jesus christ was not this effeminate you know a sissy you know just oh, i don't offend anybody no jesus christ does some pretty hardcore things okay he didn't he wasn't this oh watch out for the feelings no you know, I mean, I guess Jesus Christ was wrong for going into the temple in John chapter 2 and just flipping the tables around and kicking the people out of the temple. You know, Jesus Christ did teach, you know, peace and love, but he also taught, you know, hell. He taught, he taught on hell more than anything else in the Bible. Uh, but let me show you that. 
Matthew chapter 15, verse 21. Here's the big, also the big error. And I could just go on and on about this. But here's also the big error of a lot of these heretics who don't rightly divide the word of truth according to 2 Timothy 2.15. They'll always go back to the words of Jesus Christ for your salvation. And the problem with that, I'm going to show you, is actually in Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 and 28 is that Jesus Christ's earthly ministry was primarily to the Jewish people, okay? So going back to the words of Jesus will not save you. Jesus Christ was not was not speaking to Christians in the book of Matthew and in, in the parables and the Sermon on the Mount because Christians didn't exist during that time period. Christians did not exist till Acts chapter 11, verse 26. That's the first mention of Christians, okay? Christian means you're in Christ. Okay, there's nobody in Christ before the crucifixion. And the New Testament did not officially begin until after the death of Jesus. You can see Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15 and 18 on that. Okay? So they always like to go back to the words of Jesus. Okay? And, and obviously you should consent to the words of Jesus Christ. I'm not denying that. Okay? Consent, you, know, you should obviously you know, should pull up the scripture on that. Uh, I think it's First uh, Timothy chapter 6. I think First Timothy chapter 6. Yeah. First Timothy 6, 3. Okay? You should consent to the words of Jesus Christ. Absolutely. Uh, 1 Timothy 6, 3. If any man teach otherwise, he consent not to the wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to, to his doctrine, which is according to godliness, he is, verse 4, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about uh, questions and strifes of words, which cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, uh, verse, verse 5, perverse disputings of men of corrupt, per, per, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, destit and destitute of the truth, hard to read, in case you haven't noticed, I've got these these new blue light glasses, and they really do kind of help with the eye strain. Uh, they just came in yesterday, so they really help. Uh, yet destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness from such withdrawal thyself. You should consent and listen to the words of Jesus Christ, but not for your salvation. Following the words of Jesus Christ is not going to save you. Okay, he was not he was not sent to Christians. Okay, Romans fifteen, I believe it's Romans fifteen eight, says that he was. Uh, let me just check that make sure. Romans 15, 8. Uh, yeah. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision. Okay? He was sent to the Jews. That was who his earthly ministry was for. He was not speaking to Christians. But back to the whole thing of pride. Just had to point that out because they always like to go back to the words of Jesus for your salvation, which you should go there for instruction in righteousness. You know, 1 Timothy uh, 3, verse 16 and 17, but you shouldn't. It's not for your salvation today. He wasn't speaking the Christians and plus it was before the crucifixion but Matthew chapter 15 verse 21 okay on the thing of pride okay these these heretics like watch them D they just don't want to get down on the on their knees before a holy righteous God and admit they're a dog and that they're a sinner okay Revelation 15 4 is clear that God's the only one that is holy okay you're not holy without Jesus Christ if you're saved okay but these heretics like watch them D these these self-righteous prideful papists they want to be holy without Jesus Christ. They want to attain salvation. Hey, just like kind of like Satan in Isaiah chapter 14, uh, verses 12 to 15. Okay, I will ascend into heaven. I will be like the most high. That's what Satan said in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 to 15. These heretics are no different. They want to ascend into heaven. They want to ascend by their own righteousness instead of trusting in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Romans 10, 3 talks about how the Jews were trying to establish their own righteousness and ra rather than submit themselves to the righteousness of of God, okay? These heretics are no different. Again, a uh, bit off topic, but just had to get back to the point now. Uh, Matthew chapter 15, verse 21. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre, hope I'm saying that right, and Sidian. Not good at reading, I do apologize. Verse 22. And behold, a woman of Canaan, a black woman, uh, came out from, of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. And then, uh, and it, by the way, here is verse 24. It again shows you who Jesus Christ was sent to. He was not sent to the Christians. Matthew 15, 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay. Again, Matthew chapter 10, verse 5 to 6. Go not in the way of the Gentiles, but go unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Paraphrasing, of course. Uh, but then, verse 25, Then she came and worshipped him, and saying, Lord, help me. And verse 26, But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. He just called her a dog. You know, Jesus Christ called this, this woman a dog. Okay, Let's see how she responds. Matthew chapter 27, And she said, I am not a dog. Oh, wait, she didn't say that. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs... 
yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall down from their master's table. Okay, uh, verse 28. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, uh, great is thy faith, be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Okay, what's going on here, okay? Here's the, here's the big challenge. Here's how you test if these, these uh, self-righteous heretics, okay? Because again, 1 John, 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 to 3, we can test their spirits, okay? Here's how you see if they're self and just for anyone, really. Just see, here's how you test if they're self-righteous or not. Ask them, okay, quote, show them Matthew 15, uh, verses 26, and just say, if Jesus Christ were to call you a dog, would you would you say truth, Lord, or would you argue with them? Okay? Watchman D, if you're watching this, I'd like you to answer that question. If Jesus Christ called you a dog, Okay, would you argue with him and say, "Oh, I'm, 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 I'm pretty holy though. I'm not a dog," or would you say to him, "Truth, Lord," you know? Guarantee a lot of these self-righteous heretics would argue with them. Guarantee it because they're prideful. They're self-righteous. I keep saying that, but it's true. Okay, they don't want to admit that they're uh, dirty. But let me just show you Revelation fifteen four. Because these guys think they're holy without Jesus Christ. Well, they'll say, "Well, Jesus Christ is there," but really, they're the ones. When it comes, to, when it really comes down to it, okay, they'll, they'll say Jesus Christ saves you. But what it really comes down to is that they're the one, they're trying to save themselves by their holiness and their so-called, you know, so-called holiness. Revelation fifteen four: Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy. For all nations shall come and worship before thee. For thy judgments are made manifest. Okay. God said, well, not God speaking here, but God is the only one that's holy, for thou only art holy, okay? You're not holy without Jesus Christ, okay? If you think you are, you're you're lost, just that plain and simple. But here's a video, here's uh, about 9 minutes and 41 seconds in. He's reading a bunch of comments and openly admits that he's preaching a works-based false gospel. And again, good works are important, okay? You should do good works, and obviously when you're saved, the Holy Spirit will come in and change your life. The Holy Spirit will come in and clean your life up and get sin out. It's called spiritual regeneration. It's not the same as salvation, though. And again, that's where these heretics go wrong. They, they mix the two together. It's not the same thing. Spiritual regeneration is after your salvation. Okay, it's a lifetime process. Salvation is a one-time event. It's not a process like the Roman Catholics teach. Okay, but here is the clip. True. He is preaching Satan's gospel of faith. Of faith, good plus works. I think he meant faith plus good works. I think that's what he meant to say. To be saved. Let me take this down. Okay, you saw what the other guy said already. I'm going to take this down so we can just read on his page what he says. And he says, uh, he is preaching Satan's gospel of faith plus good works to be saved. Uh, that's not Satan's gospel. That's actually the true gospel. Oh, so in other words, faith plus good works is the true gospel. He's lost. He's, he's preaching work salvation. He's a papist. Let me, let me rewind that for you. And he says, uh, he is preaching Satan's gospel of faith plus good works to be saved. Uh, that's not Satan's gospel. That's actually the true gospel. Actually, it is Satan's gospel. You're preaching a false gospel, a false works-based gospel, which is accursed. You're a false teacher. And yeah, I'm being pretty harsh because he's, he's damning people to hell. Okay. Let me show you a bunch of scriptures that these heretics don't like. Okay. Uh, just to go. Here's here's one they really don't like. Okay. Because apparently faith plus works is the true gospel. Okay. Titus three five. Not by works of righteousness which we have done. Hmm. Not by works of righteousness which we have done. Okay. But according to His mercy, He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Okay. Jesus Christ is who saves you. You don't save yourself by your good works and holiness. Okay. He's a heretic. And he's denying the the uh, sufficiency of Jesus Christ on the cross, just like a Roman Catholic would. That's why I call him a papist, because he's just preaching Roman Catholicism. Romans chapter 4, verses uh, 5. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Now, obviously, I want a quick little side note. This is often a verse that the easy believers heretics will use to just deny repentance, and that's not right either. However, what Watchman D is preaching is the is the opposite end of the spectrum, the work salvation, self righteous her heresies. Okay, so you're not, you know, your faith is kind of righteousness. It's not by your works. Uh, where is it? Here's another good one. First Timothy chapter one, or Second Timothy, sorry, chapter one, verses eight, uh, verses eight to nine. Sorry, 
Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me as prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in, in Christ Jesus before the world began. Not according to your works, but I guess according to Watchman D, I guess Paul was lying if he said not according to our works, but according to Watchman D, it is faith plus your good works. He's calling God a liar. He's calling Paul, writing under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, a liar. He's of his father, the devil. And again, I'm bringing pretty hard because he's a false teacher, a false prophet. You know, nor does the Bible say we should pray or be nice to false prophets. Okay? Let me show you some scripture on that. Galatians chapter 1, verses 8 to 9. Uh, I'll start at verse 6. I marvel not that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you who would pervert the gospel of Christ, like Watchman D, like the Roman Catholic Church, like the Calvinist movement, all, all these heretical cults. Uh, but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which you, we have preached unto you, let him be a curse. Uh, as we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, than that uh, that you have received, let him be accursed. Okay, Watchman D, he's accursed. Okay, and one part of the reason why I didn't go on the live stream with him was, first of all, I was busy, I was working. Second of all, even if I wasn't busy, you know, he's accursed. He's he's teaching a false gospel. You know, if you're saved, you're not supposed to be going to have some friendly chit chat or some little debate with a false teacher who's accursed. Okay, so even if I wasn't busy, I would still wouldn't, wouldn't go on the live stream with them, because, again, he's a curse. Okay, I'm not I'm not gonna have a little friendly chit chat with a false a cursed teacher. That's simple. A false teacher that's a curse. I'll put it that way. Okay. Uh, Ephesians two verses eight to ten, and I'm going to verse ten gives a uh, point I want to bring up. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. Not of your righteousness, not by works of righteous, righteous, righteousness, which we have done, not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You see, when you're saved by works, like a Watchman D is teaching, you can boast. You can say, well, I'm pretty good, I'm pretty good, look how good I am. You know, I'm living holy, I'm, and again, you should live holy. But again, who is helping you do it? It's the Holy Ghost, okay? But you can boast if you're saved by works, which is what Watchman D is doing. Because, again, I, I keep bringing this point up, but it comes back to a place of pride. He does not want to admit, get down before a holy, righteous God and admit, yeah, I'm a dog. If Jesus called him a dog, he would probably argue with Jesus and say, well, I'm not that bad, you know. Okay. Ephesians 2.10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained, that we should walk in them. Okay. We're created for good works. Okay. Another good scripture on that is Titus chapter 2, verses 11 to 14. Okay, you're created for good works. God will, will make you a people peculiar and zealous of good works. Okay, paraphrasing, of course. That's Titus chapter 2, verses 11 to 14. Your people are zealous of good works. But again, it's not for your salvation. Okay, it's the regeneration after your salvation. Okay, Luke chapter 18. By preaching a works-based gospel, Watchman D is also proving he's a Pharisee, too. Luke chapter 18, verses 9 to 14. Then spake he this parable unto a certain which trusted, sorry, which, highlight that thing. I'm sure, still getting used to, still trying to get used to using the mouse. Which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Look how holy I am. I'm living this holy life. What are you doing, you know? He's trusting in himself that he's righteous. He's a Pharisee. Verse 10. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee, the other a publican. The Pharisee, verse 11, the Pharisee stood and prayed with us himself, God, I thank thee, that I am not, I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as is publican here. You know, I fast twice in the week. Uh, verse 12. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. You know, self-righteous and prideful. But look at the publican. And by the way, those, those verses that the Pharisees speaking just perfectly describe anybody who teaches work salvation, conditional security, sinless perfection, all those heresies. Verse 13, And the publican standing afar off would not, would not lift up so much his eyes, so much his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Look at the result. Verse 14, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other, for everyone that exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbles himself shall be exalted. You know, 
Watchman D and these other works righteous heretics, they don't want to humble themselves before God and admit, yeah, I'm a dog, I'm filthy, I'm a dirty sinner. I need Jesus Christ and his righteousness, not my own self-righteousness, which is filthy rags. According to Isaiah, uh, I think it's 64, verse 6. They don't want to do that. They're trusting in themselves that they're righteous. They're Pharisees. But uh, continuing. Of course, he likes to, he's going to go on to quote. <laughs> okay. He goes on to quote the uh, typical verse that all these conditional security heretics like to use, uh, which, again, to teach conditional security, you have to always rip scripture out of context, and he does that right here. <laughs> okay. Uh, he says, I originally thought he was a charismatic. Yeah, I thought you were a charismatic because you're basically preaching the same heresies as the charismatics do, of the, the heresy of baptismal regeneration, all the other stuff. So I thought you were a charismatic, then someone told me you were a Campbellite because he, he goes on to say, oh, he's falsely accusing me. Well, I'm just going by what I was told by other people, okay? I thought you were a charismatic, then someone told me you're a Campbellite. I'm like, oh, so he's a Campbellite, you know? And they're also just a lot like the charismatics. I'm just going by what I was told, okay? Because various charismatic and Pentecostal groups believe baptism is part of salvation. Okay, so right here, he's admitting that he was wrong about that. But he hasn't apologized to me. He hasn't corrected himself. He says it on the video. I haven't apologized to you because you, you um, turn off your comments. You know? Mm -hmm. And to my knowledge, he has never corrected himself. So he doesn't care if he's falsely accusing people of being charismatics or Pentecostals when they're not. Okay? I originally, he originally thought that, but now he says, I didn't realize he was a Campbellite. Well, yeah, he's also, well, this, Watchman D, he's falsely accusing me of, you know, loving my sin and that kind of stuff and whatever. Guarantee you that's what, he, that's what he's thinking and all that kind of stuff. It's wicked. Again, just pride, 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 all the way through. Oh, yeah, oh, goodness, I can't see the rest of the, that's great. Anyways, I don't know what he says right here because, let's see here. If I can, yeah, find it here. Yeah, yeah, here it is. So he says, <laughs> I want to be able to finish the reply. It wasn't letting me. He says, I didn't realize he was a Campbellite. The Campbellite are equally as false and heresy filled as the devil possessed charismatics and Pentecostals. Do you hear this guy? Mm -hmm. Kind of careless with his words. Yeah. Just, uh, not being being careless. You actually compare. Uh, Mark chapter 5 with how the charismatics of Pentecostals act is devil possession. It's not me being careless. It's just going by what the word of God says. Say the least. So now he's accusing me of being a Campbellite. Mm -hmm. Again, that's what I was told. So I'm just, I'm just going by what I was told. You know? He wasn't aware of it. But apparently, this Jesus is God guy that he's responding to, well, I guess he can be trusted. Yeah. But he's wrong. I'm telling you, I'm also not a Campbellite. Okay, uh, and obviously word got back to him that I wasn't a charismatic or a Pentecostal. Okay, but now he wants to call me a Campbellite, mm -hmm. and he doesn't care if he's right or wrong. He's just shooting out the lip, and really not too concerned about what he's saying about people. I just find that a little disturbing. Hey, there's reflect. God can never go back on his word or promises. I agree. This is what reflect says. Hebrews 13, 5, can, will never leave us nor forsake us. I agree with that, mm -hmm. in a way, because there's conditions to it. You uh, if there's conditions to it, then you're preaching a false gospel, because you're saying that basically Jesus Christ's sacrifice on the cross was not enough. You're having to save yourself, which he openly says, you're saved by works. So, he's lost. Okay, anybody who teaches, okay, let me say this, okay. Because you got this is easy believist heretic Ed Fenninger saying that eternal security is not a salvation issue. Yeah, it is. Anyone who says you can lose your salvation, they're lost. Okay, well, maybe not lost. Could, okay, some of them could just be deceived. But he, people who are militantly for this heresy of conditional security, they're lost. Okay, they're denying the righteousness and sufficiency of Jesus Christ on the cross. Okay, the righteousness of Christ given to you at salvation and the sufficiency of His atonement on the cross, because they're saying you have the bit. They're saying that your works have a part of your salvation. Because if you can lose your salvation, you're saved by works. Because you're having to do stuff to keep your, keep yourself saved. So, yeah. And of course, he loves going to Hebrews. And, you know, who is Hebrews written to? I proved this in other videos. Who is Hebrews written to? He, uh, Hebrews. Jews. Okay? There's not one person in Christ in the book of Hebrews. Okay? Paul's not speaking to Christians. He's speaking to Jews. And it's for the time of Jacob's trouble. 
It's not for us now. But again, th they don't rightly divide the word of truth. You got to read Hebrews 12. Now, see, you take one scripture and isolate it from its context, and you can do pretty much. Yeah, like he's going to do in a few minutes. He's going to take one scripture and isolate it from its context. He's a hypocrite. He, he's just ridiculous. Again, these Pharisees can't can never see their own hypocrisy. You want with it, okay? I don't think anyone should deny Jesus. Jesus is. I don't think they should deny Jesus either. Uh, Jesus is Savior, but God won't leave us. Okay. So, my friend, by the way, would you like to call in? I'm going to go ahead and offer that up front. Reflect. And what is your name? So I don't have to call you Reflect. It's a little weird. I know. Romans chapter uh, 16. Cause, you know, he's, he's all calm and all nice, you know. Let me show you a verse of scripture on that. Because a lot of false prophets are like that. All calm and nice and just soothing and everything. Romans 16. And again, I'm not directing this at Reflect upon the word. Obviously, he's right to rebuke this guy, but I'm saying this is how a lot of these false prophets act like watchmen indeed. They're all, all nice and calm, you know. Uh, Romans 16, 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrines which ye have learned and avoid them. Uh, for they, oh, sorry, they there are such, verse 18, for they there are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. Good description. And by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. They, they may see them all nice, all, you know, all, all nice and, you know, cuddly or whatever. All nice and, I'll put it this way, all nice like a little teddy bear. But really, good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Okay? They will deceive newly saved Christians by their, their fair words and good speeches. Oh, yes. You know? Don't be deceived by that. you got to watch out for that. Okay? And again, oh, why are you being so harsh? He's a false teacher. He's accursed. Okay? He's preaching a, a damnable works-based gospel. Okay? Nowhere does the Bible say you should pray or be nice to false prophets like that. Okay? Again, Galatians 1, uh, 8 through 9. They're accursed if they're preaching a false gospel. Look at the definition of the word accursed. It means it's not a good meaning, okay? Let me just actually look up the word. I want to make sure I don't leave any stone unturned. Okay? Dictionary. Out of the uh, 1828 Webster's Dictionaries here. Here it is. Let me just... Uh, how do I use... It's like that. Search up the word accursed. Accursed. This is 1828 Webster's Dictionary. Doomed to destruction or misery. So you shall be accursed. John 6. Separated from the faithful, cast out of the church, excommunicated. I wish myself were accursed from Christ. Worthy of the curse, detestable, uh, excreable. Not good at reading on the screen. Uh, keep from the accursing. Hence, wicked, malignant, and in the, malignant in the extreme. Okay? Doomed to destruction and misery. When you're a Christian of false gospel, you're accursed. You're doomed to destruction or misery. Again, that's the uh, 1828 Webster's Dictionary definition of accursed. Uh, let me just. How about we also check it out? Uh, again, I'm not the kind of person where I'd really kind of go back to the Greek or anything, but because uh, I, I, I believe everything you need is in the King James Bible, but I do like to use sometimes the Greek as a dictionary, which I might do right now. Uh, Galatians 1 8, where is it? And I want to point out something too, you know, when it comes to the whole, you know, Ruckman thing, I, I've said in the past that one of the areas I disagree with Peter Ruckman on is his stance that the King James is basically more than an accurate translation and a preserved translation of God's Word, that it's actually like advanced above the original autographs. I disagree with that. Uh, but again, I'm not the kind of person where I just say the Greek corrects the King James. No, the King James is not corrected by the Greek. However, or sorry, the uh, Greek does not correct the King James. I'll put it that way, okay? However, the King James also does not correct the Greek, okay? I'll, I'll just put that out there too, okay? So I'm not like a Rachmanite in the sense of I think the King James is like advanced above the Greek and Hebrew. No, I don't believe that, okay? Do I believe that all you need is the King James Bible? Absolutely, yeah, okay? I don't, I'm not the kind of person where you just have to learn Greek and Hebrew. No. All you need is a King James Bible. I mean, I personally look at Greek and Hebrew, but I don't use that as like a final standard, or I don't try to correct the King James with the Greek and Hebrew. Okay. I want to put that out there. But let's look at the word accursed means in the Greek. Oops. What did I just do there? This is the word in the Greek. Uh, it means anathema. Okay. Accursed in the Greek means anathema. That's where the word, you know, anathema comes from. Anathema, okay? Uh, it means 
A religious ban or consecrately excommunicated female person occurs anathema, curse, excrete. Okay. So you're excommunicated. That'd be for someone who is obviously saved. But it means you're a curse, anathema. That's what the word means in the Greek, essentially. Not like the best definition. I kind of think that Webster's de definition is a bit better, but, you know, either way, it still means the same thing. Uh, it's not good to be a curse, I'll put it that way. But continue. No, your mom didn't name you Reflect. Just give me your first name if you don't mind. Just feels a little more natural. Uh, so obviously, my friend here uh, saw the title of my video today. It's, If We Deny Him, He Also Will Deny Us. Now he says, I don't think anyone should deny us, den uh, should deny Jesus, but he'll never forsake us. Okay, well, but what does the scripture say? It says, if we deny him, he says, I'm in England, I'm Ben. He's a dude named Ben. All right. God bless, Ben. And he's in England. Wow. Okay, w would you like to call in? I got, uh, you can uh, Skype. So, so keep in mind, earlier he said, oh, don't look at scripture in context, don't rip it out of context. Watch as he rips this verse out of context, like these heretics always do. I mean, I've seen this so many times where they rip, rip this verse out of context. You can zoom. Uh, so it shouldn't be a problem. I've talked to plenty of people over there in the UK or wherever. I've talked to people all over. Okay, uh, let me just uh, quickly go ahead. Uh, where is it? Oh, here we go. Paul. Paul, by the way, dispensationalist. This is your apostle, right? Mm -hmm. He is saying. No, so we'll talk on dispensational there. The Bible says in Second uh, Timothy two fifteen to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay. And again, I prove that the book of Hebrews is not written to um, Christians. Okay, but watch. He, 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 these guys always do this. They rip this verse out of context. Uh, right here. If we deny him, that's Jesus. He also will deny us. No, I'm cool, thanks. Well, I mean, I figured that. Most people don't want to call in. Um, why didn't you read the rest of the verse? If we deny him, he also will deny us. How come he didn't read the very next verse? Interesting. Let me show you why. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 12. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. And they stop right there. They say, see, you can, you, he, you, uh, Jesus Christ will, he will deny you if you deny him. Okay? Okay. Keep reading the very next verse. Okay? They never read the very next verse. Let me show you what it says. If we believe not yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Okay? When you're a member of the body of Christ, when you're part of Christ's body, bone of his bones, flesh of his flesh, let me show you that scripture. Ephesians chapter, it's really good, to know, that's why it's really good to know your Bible so you can, you know, refute these heretics. Uh, yeah, Ephesians 5.30. For we are members of his body and of his flesh and of his bones, okay? When you're a member of the body of Christ, go back to 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 12, or sorry, verse 13, he cannot deny himself. If he would deny you, he'd be denying himself because he'd be denying his own body. Because when you're part of the body of Christ, Ephesians 2, I'll show you that, because you're seed in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So if he denies you, he'd be denying his own body, thus denying himself. He cannot deny himself. Uh, where is it? Here, here, Ephesians 2, 6. And hath raised us, to, sorry, hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Okay? When you're saved, you're seated already right now in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You know? But he can deny... Oops, sorry. Had a phone call there. Um, but he can deny you, apparently. So apparently, you're seated in heavenly places, but then you lose a heavenly place. And I guess, because you're born of his bones, flesh of his flesh, he denies you. So I guess he has to cut off an arm or, or cut off a finger or whatever because you lost your salvation. So you're, he has to cut off part of his body or something. Ridiculous. Okay? Ridiculous. And a good final scripture to end this off. I mean, there's so much I could say on this issue. That's why the video's been kind of long. Uh, first Peter, oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, First Peter chapter 1, not, sorry, chapter 1, verse 3, not chapter 3, verse 1. First Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Here's a really good verse to end it off that just totally refutes his heresies, okay? And again, the epistles of Peter, again, rightly divine, the word of truth, the epistles of Peter, uh, you got to be careful because the epistles of Peter are not completely written to a Christian. Okay, there are some parts of it, like Second uh, Peter chapter two, 
I'm sorry, First Peter chapter two, which are addressed to the Jewish people. So you got to be careful. There is some stuff that is for the Christians, but other stuff is not written to Christians. It's for the Jews. Okay, Paul is your apostle. Okay, Romans chapter eleven verse thirteen and Romans fifteen sixteen. Okay, Paul is your apostle if you're a Gentile. Okay, not Peter. There is some stuff. Again, there is some stuff in the book of Peter or the epistles of Peter that are for Christians. This is one of them. Okay, but you got to be careful. Same thing with the epistles of John. It's not completely written to a Christian. And that's another thing these heretics don't understand. They don't rightly divide, rightly divide the word of truth. They don't understand the difference between law and grace, between Israel and the church, between you know, the apostle to the Gentiles and people writing to the Jews. They don't understand the difference. Okay. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 to 5. A good way to end this off and refute these heretics. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy, okay, not your righteousness, his mer abundant mercy, hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Okay? doesn't fade away. It's reserved in heaven for you. Your seed in heavenly places. Look at verse 5. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Oh, you have, you have to have faith. You have to keep the faith to be kept by the power of God. No, you're kept by the power of God as a result of your faith. You don't have to keep the faith. That they'll try to say that. But you're kept by the power of God. You know, you can't lose your salvation. You have an inheritance that is undefiled. It does not fade away. It's reserved in heaven for you. Ephesians 2, 6, your seed in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Okay? These heretics don't want to admit that because they don't want to get down on their knees before a holy, righteous God and admit that they're sinners, that they're dirty, they're worthless, and they need Jesus Christ. They can't earn their own salvation. So, yeah, Mark and Avoid Watchman D. Uh, this has been a strong rebuke because he's twisting scripture. He is a false teacher preaching a false gospel of, of works. Openly admits it. Again, showed you that. Uh, Mark and avoid him. He's a false teacher, and if he doesn't get saved, he's going to burn in hell. Okay? He is uh, trying to earn his salvation and trying to ascend to heaven by his own righteousness, just like Satan in Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 to 15. He's of his father, Satan, okay? like all these heretics are. So, anyway, Mark and avoid Watchman D. He's a false teacher. He's uh, preaching a false gospel. He's accursed, according to Galatians 1. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.